Okay, so this is Austria and we are in and out of fog in the mountains and the reds are roaring in the background but we are out the gums. And of course I have the Kiplauf with me. Brakes like a shotgun. I don't know anything more Kiplaufish than the shoots Chamoui in Austria with a Kiplauf. I also have this fantastic bungee. Doubles as a bow. It's mostly to get the rifle up quickly and it doesn't move. So the problems I had with the bipod last year was that it kept opening when I was carrying it on the rifle. And for that reason, this year we have put it in a holster. And of course the camera bags. So, so we're off for a walk. So what, what's the plan? Uh, we pack our gear drive down there to the to the valley floor and stalk and take a stalk up there where we where we can hear the stag and I saw yesterday about six chamois. So what do you use for footwear when you're walking steep country like this? My normal mountain boots they are able to get some crampons. Yeah. They are a little bit stiffer and warmer. Yeah. So you can you can put the the inside of the of the of the foot into the into the slope. I like the I like the high boots in in thicker vegetation vegetation so you don't get the, the scratches above. And what would you say is the biggest dif difficulty when you hunt here in Austria in terrain like this? Is it uh, seeing them or getting into them or steep slopes, slippery, yeah. slippery grass, some rock cliffs. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. I yeah. don't want to go over them. No, shooting the chamois is the easy part. Yeah, the hard part is bringing them back to the back to the road. So that's what you would like to see more when you have clients, fitter clients. Or what's what's the biggest difficulty you would have with a client when you take bad shooting? Money? Bad shooting. Yeah. Okay. So it was sweaty work. I think so. <laughs> This episode contains sponsored items. Before you go, subscribe, like and comment. Click the bell if you want notifications of new episodes. Standing in the toilet. Are the camps territorial like the road here? Do they feed inside the same area every day? The males are, the old males are very territorial. They have their own, own territory which they are defending. But females and younger males, not territorial. Or let's say not, not strict territorial. They move with the feed. In spring, Where's the first green? And go up with the with the snow. And they would prefer the higher the food is up, they would go up. Up to the tops.
I'm sorry, Rollins. Do that was need this around here. Get me the arm. So what you do if you walk into animals above you in steep terrain like this? Yeah, mostly that's uh, that's not an animal you're able to shoot yeah. because of the backdrop. Yeah. And uh, if they're really, um, say, in this case, if there were a chamois up there, yeah. I would wait, stand still until they get until they get over the top, yeah. and then get around it and try to try to interrupt them in their trail. We go sideways after. Yeah. 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 What's the trick when you're walking with a stick, Lucas? As you're putting it into the terrain? Yeah, the trick is to, to lean into the terrain yeah. so you get a, a third leg, third leg on the mountain. And you also use it to balance and support the ankles or do you put your body weight on it or is it just a backup in case you fall? Uh, mostly it's a backup yeah. in, case of, in case of fall, but uh, in really tough terrain, I, I also put my weight on it. Okay. Or if you have some some higher steps to get on, I use it like that and get up. And in traditional sticks, they don't break. They break. They break sometimes. Mostly, for the most of my life, I used these traditional sticks. Yeah. But um, yeah, in the last year, I tried this shooting stick. Yeah. You can fold it up and shoot with it. And that you have uh, a V in the front and a V in the back, yeah. and you're really stable and can can, can take some some far shots. It's probably going an hour or two before the snares, so regulating it loss before it start freezing. Chamber's empty, I'm just going to aim. Now, if you know where your bipod needs to go, you will always be able to line up for a good position. So learn to recognize where the bipod needs to go. The buck, the buck has a very, very nice silver coat. I've not often seen that. So this is basically just to show you how I aim and how steady you will be in a normal field position. Also, you will see the limitations of the trigger cam. The sensor size just isn't big enough to handle twilight.
animosity? Is it we are looking for when we are spying them from across the valley? Is it movement or size? Mostly it's movement, yeah. And in this case, what would you, what would you like the Charmy to do? <laughs> I would like them to get out of the, the really steep stuff and yeah. get in a little, little less steep stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because that's dangerous steep. Yeah, yeah that's, that's dangerous steep. Yeah. And if you shoot them, it's most likely for them to, to fall down. And if they fall down that height, yeah. you can't use it. Most likely the, the trophy would be damaged and most likely the meat is, is yeah. not usable. And you go around the mountain and come down from the top or will you go up to one of the uh, sides and in? My approach to, to get up would be between the two drainages, up the ridge, then get up to a little, a little glassing spot, maybe find a spot where you can look on the other side of the big drainage and then wait for them to get in a better position. And then if you shoot, uh, there's a good area behind the, the yeah. curve and getting to them would be not that bad. Yeah. It would be bad, but not that bad. Yeah. The rifle is empty. Remember the lessons, if you need to shoot up, push back into the terrain. Shoot the smallest one. Okay. For me, this is the perfect shot in terrain like this. I'm aiming to quickly immobilize the animal. I don't want it running around. So the animal is going to die very quickly. I don't want the shot to be up on the shoulder blade because that can ruin the back strap. 
And I don't want it to be back into the lungs because that can create a running animal. When the animals are in cover like this, I'm looking for a keyhole to let the bullet into. <laughs> so this is a bit of a mess. You're trying to find them, get the cameras on them, and then line up the rifle and shoot the right one. If there are no keyholes, I'm looking for the larger windows that the animals might step into. is simply a larger space where I have time to react and readjust my position before the shot. So that's the right animal, but I have no keyhole to let the bullet into. So there's my chance and at this stage I make the decision to kill the animal. And I'm zooming in to make sure that the bullet won't hit any twigs. There's the twig. I'm good. It's down. Dead. So that was a very rewarding payoff for all the practice. I shot a small chamois out of a group of four. Nice. And they're actually not that disturbed because the reds are still up there and one of the chamois has resumed feeding. So we just sit still for a while and see what happens. And there's no need to educate the animals on what that noise was. Yeah. I like that. You are the first the first client who is who is doing that by itself. Show me the rifle that it's empty. Oh. I always have to ask. <laughs> and fifty percent of the time there's a <laughs> oh <laughs> there's a cartridge inside. That was a brilliant experience. Yeah, yeah that's the small one. Ah, so is the hunting typically yeah, like this? Typically, yeah. typically it's like that. At first we, we gave him his last bite. We give him his last bite. Sure. Nice too. Perfect. Edmunds hell. And what's the response? Edmunds dank. Edmunds dank. Thank you. And for Austria, how typical is this charming experience. I think I think more typically it's it's above the trees, yeah. in the mountain tops. Yeah. But uh, for around here, this is a, a pretty typical hunting experience. Yeah. And you will have similar weather and anything in the season. Yeah, that's uh, weather is is changing all the time. Okay. And how will the walking be here when it freezes? Can you use the same areas, or do you have to change the places? You you have to to plan your hunts. Yeah. Uh, if it if there is some rain, some frozen rain yeah. on the rocks or on the grass, you have to to avoid such such areas as we okay. as we used them today, as we hunted them today. to get to Chami down as well. Excellent. Subscribe to the THLR channel by clicking the left logo icon so you'll be shooting straighter than a drunk skunk before the sun shines over northern Norway.